Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, today's our topic of discussion, Multiple Sclerosis and then glein barry Syndrome. Uh, it is from the Neurological Emergency. So, first one is a Multiple Sclerosis. So, what is mean by Multiple Sclerosis? So, first we will define the term. So, multiple in the sense we know there is a various segments or uh, various in number. Sclerosis means that is defined as a scarring process or scarring, scarring process. So, it is called sclerosis. Sclerosis means scar formation. So, so I'll leave with that one. So, multiple sclerosis categorized under the autoimmune condition in which the body attacks the myelin sheath of the brain and then spinal cord. <coughs> so, generally we know autoimmune disease means the own body cell will, uh, that body will, cell will attack the own body cells or body will attack the own body cell that is called the autoimmune disease, right. So, here in this condition, in multiple sclerosis, the body will attack the myelin sheath of the brain and then spinal cord. Ultimately, it leads to the demyelination. D means there will be a complete eradication of the myelin. So, that is called the demyelination, right. So, the next question arises our side is a, what is meant by myelin sheath? So, that is our next question. So, myelin is a, one of the protein covering that coats the axon of the most nerve cells. So, it allows, what is the function of this myelin sheath means? It allows the smooth transmission of signal to their target cell. So, it is like a wave-like position. So, the uh, signal, it will jump, it will jump, it will jump like that, it will go. So, it is uh, helps to the transmission of the smooth transmission of the signals, nerve signals. So, in this condition, we told there will be a demyelination. So, the body will attack the own myelin covering. Right. So, the same thing only the body believes that the protein making up this insulation as a foreign particle. So, the body will think so myelin that protein covering is a one of the foreign particles. So, for if the body detects that's a foreign particle means what it will do it uh, tends to attack. So, it, it, it tends to attack. So, until that fully uh, eradication of the until the full eradication of the myelin uh, seed it will totally it will affect it will attack and then finally it leads to the demyelination. For that what is the consequences arise means that will create a gap and then that will create a scarring formation. Finally it leads to the uh, signs and symptoms regarding the uh, multiple sclerosis. The major thing the gap only creating the clinical manifestation. So the ultimate thing is our body is attacking the protein covering of our myelin seed that is covering of the, the insulation of the nerve and then spinal cord. So, that um, because of the affection, it fully eradication of the myelin sheath. So, that is leads creating the some gap and then scarring process that will affect the transmission of the nerve signal. So, that is the summary of this one. So, assessment wise, it will occur like an episode and then remissions. Remissions means that is a asymptomatic state. So, in, in between the disease, there will not be any signs and symptoms or clinical manifestation. That is the remission. And then uh, that episodes may, can vary in intensity. So, one episode there will be mild uh, clinical manifestation. The person may have a mild clinical features. In some other next episode, the person may have a life threat major uh, clinical manifestation they may so. And then remissions why that uh, asymptomatic state also that will be a days or uh, some hours or that some weeks. So, that will be lengthy in nature. So, vary in length. So, and then initial episode there will be a diplopia and then blurred vision and then there might be a nystagmus, involuntary movement of the eye will be there. They also experience muscle weakness, impairment of pain, temperature, touch senses. So, by reading this we can understand there will be a, a problem in motor and then sensory nerve, right. So, on the pain wise moderate to severe pain, ataxia, so impaired coordination. Uh, and then intense and tremors. So, tremors we know that is a uh, involuntary movement, shaky movement of the hand or extremity. So, intense and means, so while doing a purposeful movement, the person will have a, a tremors, not in a resting mode. If the person have a tremors in a rest mode, rest, a resting state means that is called a resting tremor, right. So, intense and means, so, if you are asking the person to hold something or uh, take something means while the, while doing a purposeful movement, the person will feel the tremors that is called the intense tremors. 
So, and then speech, vision disturbances, vertigo, bladder, bowel dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, depression, euphoria, cognitive abnormalities, uh, fatigue during episodes will occur. So, that most important, fatigue, drowsiness. So, those are the things you have to keep in mind. So, while the time if you are approaching a person with the fatigue means, so you have to uh, think the various differential diagnosis in that you have to keep in the multiple sclerosis also one of the diagnosis. So, and then also they may experience some strange electrical sensation down the spine or extremity when their head is flexed forward. So, if you ask the person to uh, flex the head forward means they will feel some a strange electrical sensation that will uh, traveling from the up to the down. And then it, it is mostly diagnosed in the young ca uh, category of the people, young age category, age between the 20 to 15 years. So, that is creating them disconcerting that is confusing one so management wise pre in pre hospital mainly it is a supportive management so we told some ataxia pain is a moderate to severe pain so we can manage a pain based on your uh, who scale world health organization pain scale and then trauma wise again because we told there may be a um, increased chance of falling because of the ataxia is there and then lack of coordination everything is there right so because of that there may be a tends to they are more prone to fall so we have to be prepared and then we have to avoid for that uh, falls and then fall related things we have to uh, take care of that one if the episode is there means based on that we have to treat Progression of the disease, it will take uh, several hours from a sense of weakness to the inability to stand. So, initially the person will present with the paresthesia or uh, weakness, of the in, weakness of the muscle. So, from that it will take uh, several time to the further worsening of the condition. So, we should not take advantage that one. So, we have to understand the severity of the disease based on that we have to transport as quickly as possible. So, in hospital wise, there is a symptomatic management and then anti-inflammatory drugs. But the worst thing is there is no cure exist for the multiple sclerosis. That is one of the worst things. So, second one is a GPS, gulen barry syndrome. This is also one of the rare condition. This is also categorized under the autoimmune disease. But still, uh, there is a one of the cause they are suspecting, but still the cause is unclear. So, the pathophysiology that one theory that states that infectious agent that attacks the body means so what will happen so if my, some microorganism affecting your body means the body will react to that microorganism so the counter attack will happen right the same thing only but the bad thing is that the agent has a protein structure that is similar to that the uh, myelin sheath so means so, which the agent which is attacking to our body, the protein structure of that uh, microorganism has a similar structure of our pro, uh, myelin sheath. So, because of that, what the body will think, both the agent and then both our myelin sheath as a, it will suspect or it will think as a foreign particle or foreign material or foreign substance. So, again the same thing only, if the uh, body think it is a foreign particle means until the complete eradication it will not leave, so it will attack the whole myelin sheath until the, the full washout. So, if the demyelination happen means there will be a problem in the transmission of the smooth uh, nerve signaling, again it will affect the sensory and then motor response. And then the Prognosis wise, mostly it is a traumatic is as it is onset and then the recover, <coughs> but in some patients recover uh, completely without any residual weakness as little as several weeks. Uh, around one third of these cases like uh, they need a respiratory support at some uh, point of the situation because there will be a, a respiratory muscle paralysis. And then in GPS, 15 to 20 percentage have a motor weakness. Those who recovered, those who survive from the GPS, they need a, in that category 15 to 20 percentage have a motor weakness. So, motor weakness means that is start from the your everything. So, that is uh, extremities and then respiratory muscles. So, everywhere it will affect. So, they need a, um, some supportive care for their lifetime. So, again assessment weight. It is a frightening of the most patient, it, is a, it will make a, some threats in the most patients. So, it begins as a weakness and tinkling sensation in the legs. So, paresthesia like a thing. So, it will start like a simple paresthesia. 
and then from the leg it moves up to the uh, it will affect moves up to the upper region so it will affect the thorax and then arms and the weakness can become severe and may it lead to the paralysis so simple paresthesia to the paralysis <coughs> in the transition being able to walk and speak to needing a ventilator to breathe can take as little as several hours so that is a horrible statement right so uh, some are before the person able to walk and then speak some are of some several after la hour later the person without ventilator they can't survive so that much uh, severity of the disease that will progress and then in most patients they will experience muscle weakness or paralysis within two weeks of the onset of the disease and then in addition to peripheral motor so auto regulatory system also that will affect and then they are more prone to swing in pulse rate and then blood pressure this is also one of the important statement so you can check uh, so be, uh, while after loading a patient you can check the bp and then pulse so you may think that is a normal uh, pulse rate of 70 or a bp of you are noting as a 130 70 so you are considering as a you are thinking as a that is a normal uh, ratio so no need to check anything but the thing is they are, <clears throat> there will be a severe swing so once after and five minutes or after and three minutes there may be a vice versa there might be a hypertension or that might be a hypotension so we have to keep in mind in that case if you are considering if you are thinking or if you are making a decision as a gps means so continuous monitoring should be there so management ways in pre hospital mainly we are focusing on the ability of the patient to effectively protect the airway and then ventilation so that is most important because the motor weakness severely the person may get compromised so patency of the airway regularly we have to check ventilation the person we have to monitor continuously ecg monitoring we have to repeat the vital signs uh, continuously and then continuous etco to monitoring that providing the impending respiratory failure so etco to monitoring thereby we can assess the ventilation so that also should be done and then administer iv fluids to maintain a blood pressure if it is indicated and then treat hemodynamically significant bradycardia is there means based on american heart association that uh, atropine will give 1 mg up to the 3 mg is a maximum dose if it is not uh, reverting again if the person is still in high uh, bradycardia after and 3 mg of atropine means then we are going with an transcutaneous pacing still if it is not subtrading means then we'll go with an some inotropic drug right uh, your uh, dopamine infusion or we have epinephrine infusion that we can follow so that is american heart association guidelines and then uh, the person may have a terror so we told that is a uh, 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 frightening one right so for that reason we can give the comfort the patient we can give the some comfort uh, patient education and all we can do and then upper 10 percentage of gps they are having a residual weakness for that reason they need a, a profound or continuous ventilatory support so for that reason we have to uh, always we have to should have a knowledge regarding that uh, transport ventilator ideas and then settings what are the things they are following in their home that we have to uh, make a note of it while taking an history collection and then we can follow that same settings so in hospital management mainly that include the plasma pheresis the exchange of plasma within the blood and then immunoglobulin injection so do your best shalom <laughs>